Hey, Brenton here from Effortless Swimming. In today's video, we're looking at a swimmer that I think is the gold standard of freestyle technique. When I was growing up, this is a swimmer that I would watch swimming and I thought technically he's gotta be the best out there. And one of the reasons for that is that he's six foot. Now, six foot is not short. I'm about five foot 11 and I'm about sort of average height. Being six foot, yeah, it's not short, but compared to the other Olympic medalists, Olympic finalists, six foot isn't really that tall. The majority of Olympic medalists in the 200, 400 free, they're six foot three, six foot four, sometimes a little bit taller. So to have a, an athlete that's six foot and can is a gold medalist in the 400 free, a silver medalist in the 200 freestyle at the Olympic games, you've gotta be doing something right with your technique. So we're gonna have a look at this swimmer's technique and break it down. And I think really this is the gold standard. And the majority of people I think could take away things from this, this style and the way that he swims and try and model it in their own technique. Now, if you haven't seen our analysis of Sun Yang or Gregorio Paltrinieri, I'll put links to those below in the description. And we're doing these videos every week. So if you'd like to get notified when we do these analysis videos of elite swimmers, hit the subscribe button below to get notified when they are released. We also do analysis of amateur swimmers of age group triathletes and open water swimmers and look at what they could do to improve. And if you haven't seen those, they're our Feedback Friday videos, which I'll put a link to below as well. And so just hit that subscribe button to get notified when we do release them. Now, if, if this is the first video that you've seen, I'm Brenton Ford, I'm a swim coach here in Melbourne and myself and the other coaches um, that, that work for us at Effortless Swimming, we run clinics around Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, all the capital cities around Australia. We also run camps uh, here in Australia and overseas. And I also do online coaching, online technique coaching uh, for a number of people. So I'll put those links below if you wanna work with us, but let's get into Taiwan Park's analysis. And as I said, this is the gold standard of freestyle technique. Now, the first few that we're looking at here is obviously under the water, following him in front. And there's a couple of things that I really like about this. So one of the cues that, that I've been taught since I was quite young was you wanna keep soft hands. And soft hands means just enough tension to hold the form and the shape to your hand, but no more than that. Because if you're really tense with your hand and forearm, it's wasted effort and energy. So just enough tension to basically keep this in that sort of shape. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a gap between the fingers. And we often get that question, should there be a gap? Should it be tight? Each swimmer is different, but a bit of a gap is, is recommended. And you'll see here with his entry. So he enters, extends forwards. We get this little bit of a you know, gap through the fingers. He does close that gap up a bit as he goes through the catch in the pool, which is what we want. You wouldn't want your fingers that far apart through the catch in the pool. But you can see he's got that sort of soft hands, that relaxed hand feeling, but he's still obviously maintaining the form and the shape to it, which is really nice. The other thing that you'll see from this angle is the alignment. So you know that we wanna swim on train tracks as in the hand should enter in line with the shoulder and extend forwards. You can see how great that alignment is through his, through his entire body, through here. Now, sometimes people will say, you know, if, if, there's, if the hand is coming close to the center, say so it's too much, you've got to go out wider. No, as long as you don't cross the center line. So for him, you know, the center line is right about here. So he's just in line with it and that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, what we generally want to try and avoid is coming across that, mid, that midline. And one of the other things that you'll notice here on his breathing stroke is he's really getting such great length and line through there. And I often talk about this um, on that breathing stroke as though you wanna sort of lengthen through your shoulder, through your torso, through your core, and you get this nice stretching of the muscles and that then will allow you to contract those muscles. And you'll get this good connection from the, from the hip all the way through the torso, through the shoulder, and you kind of get to connect that up with the catch and the pull. So you've got, to, you've got to lengthen them in order to contract them. And we often see that, I'll play it through, you often see that a little bit more, or it's a bit more obvious on those breathing strokes. And with a lot of swimmers that we've looked at, like if you look at the Sun Yang video, even the, the Palchineri video, similar thing on their breathing stroke, they tend to get that little bit more length and reach um, and not quite as much on their non-breathing stroke. They still obviously get great length and reach there, but not as much as this stroke here. So that is such a, such a nice position. So that's one of the things I wanted to, to show you there is the alignment and the reach and extension. Now you can see here that one of the things he does really well, if we, for, if we um, fast forwards here, is look, obviously he gets a, a great catch. So from this position here, 
you can see we've got those fingers below the wrist, wrist below the elbow. All right, and the fingertips there are about underarm depth. So when you enter, you're reaching forwards. You want to get to that position to then start the catch. So I refer to that as the, the starting catch position. I made a video on this called, um, it's about the base position. So if you're swimming freestyle and you feel like it's just a constant battle, like you're on, you're on a treadmill and you just run out of breath and it is really hard work, a way to sort of overcome that can be, think of this position right here. And I might even just pull up a slightly different one here. So think of this position here with your fingers below your wrist, wrist below your elbow, all right, out in front. Think of that as your base position, as in that's the position that you always return to on either side. So when you're on this side, you go there, that side, you go there. That That is a way where it can feel like you're not on this treadmill that just you can't get off. So by always trying to get back into that position, and then obviously you don't want to stop there, you want to just slowly continue to move into the next stroke. But thinking of that as your base position, that as your base position, it can be a much easier way to think of swing freestyle as opposed to this constant turnover of the arms. And in our video that's coming out on Friday this week, we are doing a, a feedback Friday on, a, on an amateur swimmer, like an age group um, triathlete. And one of the things you'll notice with, with him is he doesn't get that base position because he's just constantly sort of turning over. And that's one of the things that I, I recommend in this, um, this video coming out on Friday. Now, one of the, uh, the things you'll see from this front view here is, all right, we don't get much of an angle here, but have a look how good this, this catch is. So obviously we've got the start of the catch there, then the hand and forearm drops down and the upper arm pretty much stays in the same position there. And that, that requires great flexibility and mobility um, and great strength through the, through the shoulders to, to be able to do that. But one of the things that we like to look at is as you're about to pass under the shoulder, so right here, what's the angle of the arm in the water? And you'll see here that his angle is roughly 102 degrees. We want that to be between 100 and 120 degrees in that point in time. And the reason that we want that is that's going to give you the most effective, sort of the most surface area here with the hand and forearm. It allows you to do that. And with that sort of bend through the elbow, that is when you can best use the lats and those other muscle, muscles through the back and through the shoulder. Whereas if you're going down too deep, so let's say your arm is, is down here, you're not gonna get that use of the lats at all. It's just, it tends to be a little bit more up through the shoulders here. And it's not as strong and it is not as, as comfortable either. So this is a really, really nice position. If you have seen our videos before, you know we refer to this as the power diamond. And I'll link a video below um, talking about the power diamond and, and how you can get that in your stroke uh, because one of the ways can just be the power diamond drill, which I think is one of such a, it's a great drill to do because it just isolates that part of the stroke. And if you haven't got that power diamond, any sort of shape to it, like if, if you are really straight with your arm, then uh, it's a good way to, to change it. But the diamond shape, if you were to draw two of those, that's kind of what it would look like. So the power diamond is something that we want in the stroke. And we look at that angle of the arm, should be 100 to 120 degrees as we go through. So that is, that's really good to see. The, uh, the other thing that um, you will notice here as well is, even though he gets, like, it looks like he rotates a lot when you're looking side on, the most he actually rotates to here, and it's not the best angle to really look at it from, um, and I don't think this is gonna come up that well. It says 37 degrees, it's a little bit more than that. But the furthest point of rotation, look, typically we wanna see it um, if we're drawing that line through the shoulders, looking from the front, your furthest point of rotation through the shoulders should be about 45 degrees. We find most elite swimmers tend to be around sort of 40 degrees, give or take a bit here and there. Um, and you do not wanna be less than, don't wanna be less than 30. Um, usually sort of, I think of it as like 35 to, to 45 is, is a pretty good spot for most, most people. Um, and then the hip rotation, he ends up getting about, uh, about 45 degrees through there as well. 43 degrees, you can see. So he gets um, fairly even rotation through the hips and through the shoulders. And uh, that's a pretty common thing for distance swimmers is uh, even amount of rotation through the hips and through the shoulders. Now, as we look from here, you'll see that right, with his, his recovery, so hand exits at the hip, arm comes over the top, enters fingertips first. And we've talked about this entry point before where you should be going ideally fingertips first into the water. So you've then got a little bit of room to slide the hand forwards in the water. 
that's gonna give you time to get rid of the bubbles on the hand. It's gonna give you a bit more time to set up the catch. So we want this triangle shape of the arm upon entry. And then once you're there, think of it as just, just straight in the arm then. That elbow, and you actually kind of hear it. If you're listening to good swimmers, you'll hear this elbow kind of slap down a little bit, just because from there, all you're doing is just straightening the arm in the water, as you can see through here. I'm just gonna play this in slow motion. So it's really, really nice here. Both hands enter at that sort of distance out in front. All right, so it's great to see. And if you were listening to him swim past you, you'd hear that light slap of the, uh, the elbow upon entry. And you can see here, so that's where he gets rid of the bubbles. And the other thing I like about that too, is that from here, as he's reaching and extending forwards, he's not starting the catch right away. He's making sure that he's getting that length through the upper body, through the shoulder. And at the same time, that hand is, is pressing back. So those two things work together. This length out the front, this press back past the hip, that all works together. And you'll see that sort of come in with his rotation. So through his hips here and through his upper body, you get that rotation on the side. And then obviously it comes back in the other direction. So this is really, the, this is the most efficient point that he will get in his stroke. So you wanna make the most of that a bit. So again, if you're a person that feels like you're on the treadmill and things are really hard, maybe you're not reaching and extending forwards before you start the catch. So let's have a look through here. It's going down, I'll we'll just play it through. We need to get that reach forwards like you're reaching for the wall in front of you before starting the, the catch there. So um, we've got that part of the stroke. Now, if we do have a look at the, um, the catch, so you can see here, he's got, got a really nice catch and it's not over the top. I mean, we looked at uh, Sun Yang last week and he gets almost a 90 degree angle with his arm on the catch. So as we go through here, you can see the, the sort of most highest elbow, uh, the, the highest point of his catch here. He's right there. Now Sun Yang, he was going from there, he was getting to almost this position. And in, as we said in that video, that's extreme and 99.9% .9 of people cannot get that. So all we wanna do with your catch is just get it to what we call a high elbow position, which would mean that you start the catch here, we talked about that before, when the hand and forearm drops down to this position, if we draw a line from your shoulder to your fingertips, if your elbow is above above that straight line, that's a high elbow catch. And it, all we need is the arm to be anywhere in that, um, in that position, anywhere above it. So even if his arm was that green line that I just drew, it'd still be a high elbow catch. And the reason that we want that is then you've got the most surface area on the hand and forearm that you're using, that you're working with to, to pull through. Now, something that, um, that we also look for and not a whole lot of people end up getting in their stroke is what a friend of mine, Annie, would call one happy family. And it's basically like from here, as you pull through, as your hand is underneath the shoulder right there, and it's not the best angle for it, but I'll, I'll explain it anyway. We wanna try and get the shoulder, the elbow, and the hand almost lining up underneath there, because that is gonna give you, again, the most amount of surface area to work with compared to what most people tend to do is, all right, they'll get the catch. And even if you're getting a good catch, a lot of people will then pull back with their elbow too early. And so they end up getting their arm in a position that's like this. So the shoulder's there, the elbow's already pulled back and the hand and forearm's in that position. And you can obviously see the difference in surface area that you've got pressing back against the water. So what we wanna try and do and what will be more effective is instead of trying to pull back with a lot of force through this part of the stroke. So once you've got the catch, don't try and rip at it. Don't try and overpower that part of the stroke. You're going to be much better off, much faster, if you can maintain a good hold of the water by trying to keep that hand and forearm roughly vertical and getting to this position here where everything lines up, as opposed to trying to pull back hard and fast and let it having that elbow sort of slip through you're gonna be much faster by just backing off that power, but holding good form throughout it. So I'm just gonna play this through and you, you might be able to see it. We'll have a look at it on the other side here. So we get the catch, high elbow sort of set up there. And then as he pulls through, you can see is that hand, I'll pull it back where a bit more on front here. So you can see that there. Now it's not completely lined up 
as you can see, but it's pretty close. So often we find that one stroke will normally line up. The other side won't entirely line up, but that is pretty close to getting everything. One, two, three, shoulder, elbow, hand, roughly aligned. So we do not want it to be like, oops, like this, right? Which we quite often see. So that is um, one of the key points there. I'm just gonna come back to, uh, to this angle here. So when we got that front shot, this is the other thing I wanna show you. Quite often um, I'll have people write to me and they say, I've been working on my power diamond. Uh, where's this front view? All right, so quite often they'll say, I've been working on my, my catch and my power diamond, and I'm pretty sure that's where it should be. One thing you might need to check with that is where are your fingers pointing? Your fingers should primarily be facing down to the bottom of the pool the entire way through the catch and the pool. Yeah, they'll come off to the side a little bit, but primarily they need to be facing down, down here. So a lot of times when I'll get sent videos of people who feel like they've, they've got that power diamond, we'll see that this is looking great. That's in the same position, but their hand and forearm is actually doing this, where the, the fingers are pointing way off to the side. And that just, that forces the elbow down. It drops your elbow and you lose that hold of the water. So just check, are your fingertips facing down there pretty much the entire way through the, through the stroke. Now, if they're not, if they are slipping in and you're like, oh, I just can't fix it, the YMCA drill, which you might have seen, again, I'll link that video below. There's a, um, a full explanation of the YMCA drill. That's a really good drill just for rewiring your brain, getting your, making it easier to improve your catch and your pull. So I'll put a video on the, the YMCA drill there below. Um, and then the other thing I just want to show you here too is make sure you keep the hand or the palm of the hand facing back behind you the entire way through the stroke. So you can see here, if we're looking at this hand, the palm of the hand's facing behind him, behind him, behind him, all the way until the very end where then it will turn into the body a little bit to help him exit. But I've been doing a lot of analysis with our members lately. So if you join the, uh, the stroke analysis membership, you send me your videos, I do an analysis for you and then make some recommendations and give you some drills to help change the things in your stroke. And one of the things that I've seen quite a bit lately is a lot of swimmers end up keeping the palm of the hand facing back behind them until about there. And then the, the hand turns and their pinky leads the way out. So they're kind of slicing the water out the back and they just really lose a, a good part of their propulsion. So like here, the, the palm wouldn't be facing behind them. It would be facing in towards or under the body. So just they're missing it. That's kind of, it's the easy way out. And I'm not to say that people are trying to make it easy on themselves, but that's what sometimes the body wants to go towards is that easier option. So it slices out the back. So if you can keep that palm of your hand facing back behind you the entire way, apart from the very end there, and kind of the only sort of uh, exception would be on the in sweep. So from, uh, from here to here is the hand comes in towards the center a bit. The palm can turn into the body a little bit, but apart from those points in the stroke, keep that palm facing behind you. Now let's have a look at this here. So we've got, you can see with his breathing, obviously the breathing is, uh, is excellent. Get this nice, you know, fairly split vision. So that bottom third of the head is in the water. He's looking straight to the side and the head pretty much stays in line with the spine. So we, I spoke about this in, um, in a recent video where if you imagine you've got a pole that runs through your head, your neck and your spine, you go to turn to breathe, you don't want to, ideally, you don't want to try and like lift that head up off that pole. So it shouldn't leave that straight line. It should just be turning to the side and coming back. And you see this really well with Taiwan stroke. So I'll just play it through for you. So it's really nice through there. And in terms of his timing, I know we looked at um, Palchineri where he's, or he's hard, on a few strokes, like he's hardly front quadrant, as in what front quadrant means is, we always want to have a hand and an arm out in front of you. Well, if you look at Park here, he's, he's kind of got a three-quarter catch-up stroke, which would be when this hand enters the water, the other arm ends up being around about here. And look, Sun Yang's pretty similar as well. Um, now, that, that often requires a, a pretty good kick, requires a pretty strong kick to be able to do that. So if you don't have a great kick, you might go for the timing that's a little bit more like this hand's entering 
and this hand is about to pass under the shoulder. That's the timing I see with most triathletes and athletes that I work with, which are say like your amateur sort of triathletes or open water swimmers, uh, like your everyday sort of swimmers. Um, on the elite end, obviously the kick's going to be a little bit more effective and a little bit stronger. So we do see a little bit more of that three quarter catch up. So play it through, similar thing there, hands entering, that hands out there. Now it's not to say that if you don't have an amazing kick that you shouldn't be three quarter catch up, um, but it does, it's better off with a more effective kick because you, you will often need a little bit more propulsion out the back to work you through that, um, that slight catch up in the stroke there. And the very last thing I'm gonna show you here is the difference in kick. So Park is he's known for he's known for having a really, a really good kick and being six foot shorter than most of the, the guys he was competing against, you're gonna to need to have a, a really good kick, really strong kick to um, to get him up there. And so he was known for having a really effective six beat kick, which you can see here. And this is the slow motion of it. So six beats when you kind of got you got three kicks for each arm stroke. And then we see some footage here where when he's swinging a 1500, he'll be doing a four beat kick. And we looked at this again with Sun Yang the other day. So it goes to show that, look, change, change your style a bit, change the way that you kick, depending on the events that you're doing. And this is what I'll do. Like when I'm swimming open water, um, depends on the event. If it's sort of like a K to 1500 meters, I'll, I'll maintain a six beat kick. But if it's longer than that, or if I'm doing like a, a 400 or longer in the pool, I will often stick to a four beat, four beat kick. Um, so you can see it here. So we get the, uh, there. So we've got one kick on that side. So we get one, then there's a little bit of a pause and then we get one, two, and then three. And then we're back on the side again. Then we get one, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And often that pause, so you get the you get the one, breathe, and then it's two, three, four. One, breathe, two, three, four. And as I was saying last week, it's it's a hard thing to get, but if you can get that in your stroke, I've found a lot of people have improved their speed, improved the pace that they can maintain for a much lower effort because it, it can be a lot harder to maintain a six beat kick, maintain a fast pace over the course of you know, longer distance sets or longer distance uh, events as well. So for, for many people, a four beat kick can be the most efficient way to swim longer distances. Um, so it's something that's worth trying to, to work out and, uh, and get that timing. And we've got, there's a video as well that um, I did a couple of months ago on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it and you want to work on your own stroke, but you're not sure where to start, join our membership. It's where we've got all of our different freestyle courses, all of our drills. And probably the best thing for most people is the five core principles training course there. So that's kind of, it gives you the step-by-step. -step. This is what you need to work on first, second, third. This is how you do it. And this is how you can just work it into your existing program. So even if you're in a squad, even if you've got your own training programs, this is how you can work it in. But if you don't have a squad or you don't have a coach, we've got programs there as well for you to follow. So check out the membership. I'll put the link below. Thanks very much for watching. And if you're not subscribed and you do enjoy these videos, when you hit the subscribe button and that bell as well, that's going to make sure that you do get notified every time we release a new video. So thanks again for watching. Friday, we'll have another video looking at an amateur triathlete. And this is gonna be obviously quite a different stroke than this one here. But for most people, this, it's, it's a lot more relevant because a lot of people are making those sort of similar uh, mistakes that this, this athlete's making and, uh, and I'll show you how to correct those.